Uh, good morning again. This is Lily Chang. This is a big topic that I'm going to talk to you about. Again, I would like to break it down into at least four parts so that you have a chance to kind of digest each and every portion of this discussion. And so the general topic is, what does a bilingual language evaluation and therapy look like? Okay, this is a very big topic, so I can only give you break it into parts so that you can kind of understand what's going on. So the first part would be evaluation, and the second portion would be therapy. But then I would like to also tell you what an optimal language learning environment looks like. And then finally, I think it's important to know that language therapy uh, or language learning happens everywhere, everywhere, not just in a speech language therapy session. It is a myth to think that only one person in the school district can do this for you. Everyone can do it. Every child counts and every opportunity counts. So I want to make sure you understand that. As parents, you can be the conduit for your child's success. The schools, of course, are they are able to facilitate the learning of your children. So let's talk about evaluation. Evaluation can be very formal. That means we have to schedule a time. We have to figure out what is needed for the evaluation. If you have difficulty with hearing, you would need an audiological evaluation, and prior to that, maybe an ENT evaluation. If you have a problem with cleft palate, I'm sure an evaluation will need to go to an ENT doctor and a surgeon. And if you have difficulties in terms of cerebral palsy, I'm sure a physiatrist, a physical therapist, a speech therapist, and an occupational therapist, all of them will be involved in the uh, process of doing an evaluation. Now, if you were talking about purely a speech evaluation, then a speech pathologist would be the best person to do it. So in this evaluation, we must be very clear on our target, on what is it that we're looking at. Now, if this child comes in with a very, very rich uh, language background in Spanish, and we're dealing with an evaluation of speech and language, then Spanish needs to be used as the language of assessment. And then we can do a little trial test we call it stimulability, to see if this child can make the sounds of the English language. Okay, so this is very clear to me. If this child comes into our evaluation session, we must know what he or she is good at, not what she or he is not able to do. Now, anybody who comes in from another country, another country, let's say Ethiopia or Somalia, or some part in South America, or somewhere in Asia, such as Laos or Cambodia. We know that this child will already bring to you a language history, so that language needs to be used. So evaluation requires that we make a decision about what language is used for the evaluation. Now, if you don't know anything about the Lao language, you will need to find someone who can work with you on that. In this case, there is no formal testing of Lao, but you can find someone who can help you as an informant and sometimes as an interpreter to help you understand this child's Lao language. So this is very crucial. Now, do we want to do English? Of course, we need to see how well is this person able to deal with the English language, how little he or she can say, or how much he or she can say, how little he or she can understand, and how much he or she can understand. This is crucial. So the home language must be assessed in some way, many times informally. But I know for a fact that there are language assessment tools in Mandarin, in Spanish, in French, and in many other languages, in Russian, and so on. We do need to then have a person who may not be a speech-language pathologist who can be an interpreter and an assistant to make this happen. Now, a speech pathologist who happens to be bilingual or multilingual can do the assessment. I, myself, can speak Mandarin very, very well, Cantonese 
uh, quite well, and other Mandarin-related uh, languages from China. So I, myself, can do the bilingual assessment. Thank you. Now, I've just talked about assessment, and now let's go to uh, therapy. Therapy can be done individually, and it can be done in a group. Generally, one-on-one -on -one therapy is very targeted. If we're looking at a child who has difficulty with English, that is, after the evaluation, we will then deal with English language, and most of the time, the child may also experiencing they be experiencing difficulty in the home language. So let's see what we can do to create a better environment for this child. So it is possible that the speech language pathologist will focus on speech. In this way, there will be some articulation issues to deal with, such as the placement of the tongue, the, the placement of the lips, and the dental areas. So let's say we have difficulty with the sound F. One, two, three, four, five. So we will need to show the placement of the upper teeth on the lower lip. Four, five. And then if that's the case, then in Mandarin we have fa and fu. So it's very important we also help with the home language. So home language can be done at home if the speech pathologist can only deal with English. That is perfectly fine. Let's deal with a sound that's not in Mandarin, such as si. So we, we can work with this child and focus on targeted sound, such as s. So it's interdental uh, sound. And if we have difficulty with the velars in the back, then we may go kuzi, kuzi, kugua, keai, ke, ke, ke. Then we can deal with kitty, kitty cat, kitty, kitty cat. And so that would be English and both Mandarin. We can deal with the back, k, k, sound. And if we have difficulty with s, we can deal with san, e, er, san. We can also do Sam. Sam is a good boy. Sam is my good friend. Sam is a good person. Uncle Sam is a wonderful symbol. Okay, so we can deal with uh, S in that way. So therapy can be very targeted. There usually will be some uh, homework that can be associated with speech therapy because those sounds can be transferred at home. And the, home, in, in the home, we can also target er san or san is a good boy, things like that. So, so that would be speech. But how about language? Language is more important in the, in the context of overall communication. For example, send me a message. Then that would be sending a message. So there would be the s in the middle of message. And then also the final consonant J will have to be also practiced. So when you have a send me a message type of a communication, then you have to break the speech pattern into the different units. Send me a message. So if the child can get to the combination of words and sounds uh, from single syllable to many syllables, then we can deal with more of a language pattern. In this case, this would be the therapy of trying to deal with targeting many sounds in words, in context, such as a little story or a little rhyme. It could be row, row your boat, not woe, woe your boat. So it's very important to deal with the row, 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 row your boat gently down the stream. And in this case, stream might be the, the uh, cluster of S-T-R. That may be very difficult. And then maybe the final consonant of M. Mm. So gently down the stream. So we are not only dealing with a word or a sound or a sound cluster, but for them, uh, for the whole thing, it would be in a phrase, in a rhyme, in context. 
So language therapy is done in many different ways, and storytelling is one of them. Nursery rhymes would be another one of them, and singing would be another one. For example, row, row, row your boat is actually row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. So merrily, 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 life is but a dream. So in this case, we can have many, many words, but it's done in a nursery rhyme or in a song. So song. So I just want to give you a glimpse again of what language therapy is all about. Thank you. So now I want to talk a little bit about what I call ole. Ole means optimum language environment or language learning environment. O L E or O L L E, and ole could be also O L L E E, optimum language learning environment in English. Because in this case, the school the school's language is English, or the school language is English, but we can use the same methodology, and the same concept in delivering language at home. It is so important we look at school language, home language, and bilingual school environment. I happen to be someone that. Uh, uh, we'll have to deal with bilingual, trilingual school settings. So I always talk about school languages. But in this case, I would like to narrow it down to optimum language learning environment. What are some of the ingredients of an optimum language learning environment? First of all, we hope it's authentic. That means it's something that is really genuinely happening. Secondly, I want to make it relevant. To the environment. For example, right now I'm in San Diego. I heard the news that the uh, Midwest and maybe the East Coast are they are suffering tremendously because of the snow, and the temperature is now 20 degrees or 30 degrees below zero. Now imagine we have an environment like that where the snow is causing a lot of schools to close, to shut down, and also a lot of services. To shut down, and also airports are closed. So if we use that as an authentic model, then we can say that snow is falling. Snow is falling heavily. Snow is everywhere. Roads are blocked because of heavy snow. So we're dealing with the word snow, and we're dealing with the word which has a cluster. It's S N snow. Okay. So if we're going to do that, we can use this. As a very authentic way of dealing with snow, and we can look at the television. We can see the snow falling. We can look outside. We can see the snow falling. And if we have kids coming back to school after heavy snow, we can use that as an environmental, uh, a, a, a environmental threat to our going to school, or going、uh, to the shops, or going to do a, a daily businesses. So. We can use the word snow, and that is relevant, that is authentic, and that is totally optimum for learning because we can touch it, we can see it, we can see it, we can feel it, we can understand it. So that's called a very important environment for relevance and also for authenticity. Now at home, we can talk about, for example, coming up is Chinese New Year, so we can talk about New Year. Happy New Year, Chinese New Year. What do we do? We have red envelopes, so we can deal with the envelope, red envelope. What we put into the red envelope, money, and who do we give the red envelopes to? We can talk about children. We can talk about clothes, nice clothes, new clothes. We can talk about food. So at home, we can create an optimal language learning environment by using what is relevant. Again, what's real, what's here and now. And teachers, speech pathologists, parents,、uh, caretakers can all do that. We can also create an optimum environment at home. For example, mother is cooking, so she can talk about I am chopping some onions. I'm making a dough. I'm putting meat, onions, and vegetables in the dough, in the as the filling in the dough, and I can make something. So make it relevant. Make it authentic. Make it here and now. Make it real. Make it simple. You can seal it, seal, see it, see it, hear it, touch it. Make it. Make it optimum. So the ole is for everybody, 
Now we can also go back to a theme such as holiday season, such as Christmas. We can talk about a gift. We can wrap up a gift. We can use ribbons. We can use paper to package it. We can have a box. We can have some papers inside. We have. We can have a little note uh, inside, and we can make a card, and so on and so forth. Make it relevant. Language learning is about real life situation. We do not have to depend on many、uh, books or anything like that. We can use here and now. We can tell a story. We can use a language loaded environment. And we can do it everywhere and anywhere. And anyone and every everyone can do it. We can do it bilingually. We can do it monolingually. We can do it in English. We can do it in Swahili. We can do it in Spanish. We can do it in Chinese. The best of luck to you in creating an optimal language environment for all children. So finally, I want to spend a little bit of time on what parents can do. I do not want to say this sentence. That is, parents don't know what to do. I want to say that. Parents can do a lot. Parents are important. Parents are pivotal. Parents are so important. If parents both work and spend very little time at home, and then the caretakers must also be counted into this formula. So parents. Grandparents, caretakers, even friends and neighbors, and members of the community are all so important in creating a good language learning environment. Most parents that I know are helpless. They don't know what to do. They feel that they they are caught in a situation where they don't know what's the next step. And sometimes they're even frustrated because their child is not able to communicate effectively. So home environment is crucial. Make it easy for the child to use language to communicate. Make it difficult for the child to just point or pull you over. Make it easy for the child to point at something and try to say it. Now I would like to also. Say an important sentence, and I'm saying it based on what I know about children and child language. There are some children who will not use oral language to com- communicate. There will be some adults who will seldom speak or cannot use oral language. So when I talk about communication, it is clear that I want to say. That I am not saying only oral language or oral speech. I'm saying there are many different ways to do it. So I want to urge you to think about a that's augmentative, a alternative, c communication, a a c that is alternative and augmentative communication system. You must be able to find out. That there are children who will you who will use and benefit greatly from AAC. These are the children who will not use oral language to communicate, but will use alternative systems to communicate. They can communicate effectively, and they can communicate very well. When I was a young speech language pathologist, I worked with a child who has who has cerebral palsy. And I tried so much to get him to speak because at that time I thought speaking is the only thing we know how to use to communicate. I did not realize that he really was so dysarthric. I did not realize that speech was not the best way. I did not realize that. But over a period of time, I realized he could read and he could. Understand, and he could hear me beautifully. So I realized that he could use a way to communicate. In those days, we had to use a typewriter. 
So I figured out a way for him to communicate. He, he wrote me the best letter in the world, thanking me to find, for him to find a voice. And the voice is through a typewriter. He eventually won a huge award in poetry. He was beautiful, but he was never able to use oral language. Today, AAC is absolutely wonderful. Many people can benefit from AAC. That is, children can communicate effectively through other means, through technology, through mechanisms that can help them make a voice, and the machine can help the voice come out. Furthermore, we should be able to encourage any type of speech and verbal output. So if, if there's a child who is trying to say moon, that is yue liang in Mandarin, yue liang in Mandarin, it's a very difficult uh, little output. If the child says e eh, e eh, and means ye liang, we will be very happy to uh, 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 say yes, yue liang, okay. Or a child is trying to say breakfast, it came out ba ba. That means breakfast. We will say, oh, you want breakfast. This creates a better environment that we know children go through baby talk and children go through that uh, process. Even though this child may be four or five, if he or she is attempting to say something, we should definitely encourage it and repeat it correctly. Oh, breakfast. You mean breakfast. You want breakfast. Oh, you want cereal. We will get you some cereal. Provide the most important language target example and then encourage this to happen. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you.